Hello and welcome. Ico Triple Six Tube Tester, the Tube Destroyer. Clickbait? Well, kind of. But for a serious, serious reason. This is actually my go to tube tester, my Triple Six. This got passed on to me from my father. All in all, it's a pretty good tube tester. It's fairly comprehensive. Is it the best one on the planet? Probably not. But it does everything I need it to do with one exception. It doesn't have a new Vistor socket. I wish it had a new Vistor socket. This was manufactured in 1962. It also doesn't have Compactron sockets. That doesn't bother me in the least. I sold off uh, three, four hundred Compactrons at the flea market a few years back had no use for them. I don't do 19 and 20 inch portable TVs from the late 50s, early 60s. It's not my thing. So I pass them on to somebody who probably use them. If somebody begs me to test a new Vistor, I've got this Lafayette little gem here. This will do our, uh, not new Vistors, Compactrons. This also has a new Vistor socket. That's why I grabbed it. Uh, somebody begs me to test a Compactron, I've got something that will at least do mutual conductance tests on the tubes. It'll do shorts as well, but uh, not a very comprehensive tester, but good enough for those. This will do pencil tubes, the ones that are in line and the tiny little, I don't know what you call them, the really small diameter ones that are laid out like a 7-pin or a 9-pin socket. I don't know the name of them. Not off the top of my head, my memory's not working. But anyway, this will test early bipolar transistors, and it will test all the antique tubes, the old 4-pin, 5-pin, 7-pin type tubes. It'll do all of them. But why do I say it's a tube destroyer? Well, for the reason that the documentation that comes with these things has a lot of errors as far as the tube testing parameters. I always, and I've said this before, I always have my RCA tube manuals on hand because I use them in conjunction with this tester. But here's why I call it the destroyer of tubes. Let me get to the right page. And I've got several versions of this uh, setup chart and they all have the same error in them. Okay, here we go. Let's see if I can get this in a position where I can... Uh, I'm going to use this thing here. Let me get the camera zoomed in on this. Hold on, please. A couple of years ago, somebody brought me a Type 35 to test for them. When I started the test procedure. I set up the tube tester according to the chart. I had the tube in my hand and was about to plug it into the tube tester and all the hair in the back of my neck stood up. I knew something was wrong and I double checked and right here it told me the filament voltage was 25 volts and I said to myself I know better. That type 35 is a 2.5 volt filament. Now had I plugged that tube in a very rare and probably quite expensive these days tube would have gone up instantly. It would have just, I don't even think I would have seen the flash. 25 volts versus 2.5, I think it just would have made a little pop. Would have been all, all done. Then I went through the chart and did some more looking. We have type 53, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, 2.5 volts, 2.5 volts, 2.5 volts, 2.5 volts, 25 volts, 2.5 volts, 2.5 volts. That is supposed to also be a 2.5 filament. Somebody typoed that. And so far, every revision of these charts that I've seen has that same mistake, which means I'm willing to bet that hundreds of these tubes have been destroyed over the years by people accidentally setting this thing to 25 volts and plugging the tubes in. That's not the only mistake that I've seen in here. 
I was setting up to test some octal tubes. This is called an octal socket. Not loctal. Loctal are the automotive type that have the metal pin that snaps in. This is an octal versus a loctal. At any rate, I was setting this up and we have in the chart here when you do the test, you test for shorts by pushing two, three, four would be the cathode, it's underlined, I would press the cancel button, if it cancels the cathode's okay, C would be the grid cap, and then you use on this particular tube C for uh, merit, and that happens to be an 802 transmitting tube. But anyway, I was setting up one of these, and as I looked across the chart, it also said for the short test, pin 2. Now typically, on an octal, pins 2 and pin 7 are the heaters, aka the filament. You don't test the filament for shorts. Of course it's a short. It's a, fil it's a, it's a filament. So that was another mistake. I've learned over the years when I test tubes in this, verify the settings and make sure it matches the pin out of the tube before I do anything. Short video, I just want to warn you guys, if you're working on antique radios, particularly those tubes with the 2.5 volt filaments, double check, triple check, quadruple check your settings before you plug the tube in. Because it's so sad to blow the filament out of a tube, which was probably good, and is made out of unobtainium these days. That's it. I'm the Radio Mechanic. Enjoy your afternoon or evening or whenever you're watching this. And thanks for stopping by. And sorry about the clickbait.